Hey guys, it's Ash here with Watch Mojo, and these are the top 20 greatest arcs in anime. For this list, we'll be looking over the storylines in anime that shone the brightest in terms of their narratives, characterization, or just how damn enjoyable they were. Be on the lookout for spoilers since we'll be talking about each of these series at their peak. You've been talking about winning my Egyptian God card this entire duel. Now it's time for you to experience its power! <laughs> Number 20. Destiny Arc Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai <laughs> Admittedly, this fantasy fest had its highs and lows while telling the tale of the little hero Dai and his quest to defeat the Dark King's armies. But when it hit, it hit hard. And nowhere is a better example than the confrontation with Baron, a fellow Dragon Knight who also happens to be Dai's father. This arc doesn't only raise the emotional stakes, but delivers probably the best battles of the whole show, and undoubtedly its greatest villain to boot. <laughs> Number 19, The Guild Arc, Bungo Stray Dogs. Apparently, three times is the charm. The introduction of the armed detective agency and Port Mafia was certainly enough to get fans invested in this world of literary characters with thematic abilities. But it was the arrival of this third faction that launched them all to greatness. Having fierce foes forced to team up against the likes of Francis F. and his cohorts was awesome, plain and simple. It's not every day you see a were tiger team up with a literal edgelord to fight the great Gatsby atop a flying Moby Dick. Never thought we'd say that out loud. Number 18, Dream Chojin Tag Arc, Kinikuman. Wrestling fanatics eat your heart out. Since this tournament packs everything plus the kitchen sink into its spree of rumbles. One that sees many of the mainline cast meet a bloody end, all the while Kinikuman and his mass duplicate team up for the ultimate tag team against the likes of the very best of cheesy 80s anime villains such as the Stray Devil Combo and the Hell's Missionaries. WWE's got nothing on this, just saying. <laughs> Number 17, Band of the Seven Arc, Inuyasha. It said the mercenaries put up a hard fight, but it was all in vain. Imagine that, the only arc where Naraku is featured as a background character, and it's honestly amazing. In the Half Dog Demon's most shonen outing to date, he's forced to battle seven resurrected warriors famed for their bloodlust leading to a slew of struggles that pushes him to his limits. Which is stronger though? My sword or yours? <laughs> While it might sound just like a repeat of Inuyasha battling it out in order to snag another jewel shard, the fights and foes included are some of the series' best, something that was very much needed to combat all the filler. Number 16, Entertainment District Arc, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba.
A condensed yet thrilling slew of immaculate battles, as well as the biggest UFO table animation flex to date, Tanjiro's clash with Gyutaro had so much hype weaved into it that we could barely take a breath before something equally epic exploded onto the scene. The fights are, without a doubt, stunning to behold. From Usui strutting his stuff, Tanjiro's breathless swordsmanship, all the way to Nezuko entering her alpha phase, there truly was no shortage of entertainment to be had here. Just not the geisha kind. Number 15. Paranormal Liberation War Arc My Hero Academia what was supposed to be a simple counterattack turned out to be the biggest and bloodiest bout between masked heroes and villains in the series to date. While watching Mirko go all out with her killer thighs was a treat, the real draw here was how both Deku and Shigaraki truly came into their own as mortal enemies and all the trauma that came with it. Honestly, this arc felt like it wouldn't stop. From Shigaraki disintegrating a city, Deku continuously gaining more quirks, to the reveal of Darby being Endeavor's thought-dead son, come the end of the conflict, everyone was exhausted, us included. Number 14, Elf Reincarnation Arc, Black Clover. Even naysayers who had still been doubting this anime as a legit shonen powerhouse were quickly swayed when they got a gander at how hard this arc went. Having revived themselves inside the various Clover Kingdom mages, it fell to Asta and company to bring back their friends from the brink, engaging in epic battles all the while. Usually something like Mario Leona's debut or that Asta Uno combo against Licked would have been enough to earn it high praise. <laughs> But then they went and added in one of the best modern one-off anime villains for a secret boss, in the form of the Word Devil. This whole arc was high octane from start to finish. Number 13, Grand Magic Games, Fairy Tale. Turns out all Natsu and the gang needed to give their anime a shot of magical adrenaline was one big ass tournament arc. While it certainly introduced a flood of new characters to the extent it can also seem overwhelming at times, mercifully those introduced turned out to be some of the best side characters the series had ever produced. Plus the four-way battle between dragon slayers, not to mention Urza's solo run against a hundred monsters, made for great spectacles and made it well worth the price of admission alone. Number 12, Dio's World, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders. Okay, okay, it's only a few episodes long, but for God's sake, how could we not include Dio freaking Brando? <laughs> After so much searching, so many battles against stand users, Jotaro and company finally find themselves taking on the Joestar family's greatest foe. Unfortunately for them, not only is Dio a vampire, but he also possesses arguably the most powerful stand. This culminates in a brutal brawl as Jotaro struggles to finish what his ancestor started so many decades ago, a task made infinitely more difficult when faced with the time-stopping power of the world. 
Number 11. Shogun Assassination Arc, Kintama. While this exceptionally extensive franchise has managed to fine-tune the art of parody and satire to a T, it's worth noting that when Gintoki and the others want to, they end up creating some of the most brutal and exhilarating fight scenes in all of anime. <laughs> Which is pretty much the reason why this arc manages to stand above its many others. With the Shogun's life on the line, Gin finally settles the score with his bloodthirsty former comrade Takasugi. <laughs> Needless to say, they nearly tear each other to pieces in the process, and we couldn't be happier. Number 10. Battle City Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters Goes to show that with the right amount of tension, pacing, and crazy characters, even a children's card game can be epic. Well, what is it? Just what I need to take you down! With the arrival of the villainous Merrick, his rare hunters, and the insanely awesome Egyptian god cards, the series takes everything great about the Duelist Kingdom arc and took it to new heights. You've been talking about winning my Egyptian god card this entire duel. Now it's time for you to experience its power! <laughs> With a shadow game around every turn, plenty of unfortunate duelists losing their souls, the much-awaited rematch between Yugi and Kaiba, as well as an intriguing antagonist, this was Duel Monsters at its finest. <laughs> Number 9, Kyoto Arc, Roroni Kenshin. Two words, Makoto Shishio. The perfect fall to the remorseful Kenshin, the second manslayer was just what the series needed. Over time, we were introduced to the pair's differing ideologies on killing, love, and life itself, all leading up to their destined fight, and boy oh boy does it not disappoint. Not only are the action scenes something to boast about, especially for a classic series, but the conclusion only solidifies why these two are icons. Now if only we could forget about Season 3. Number 8, Dark Tournament Saga, Yu Yu Hakusho. Let's see who can take a bigger ass kicking. While various anime have managed to produce some stellar battles in this format, it's fair to say that they're all just chasing the shadow left behind this demonic slugfest. As the death matches escalate, our favorite spirit detective and his allies find themselves engaging in everything from a good old round of fisticuffs on a knife's edge, all the way to a final bout with the near invulnerable Taguro. Let's see how three months of training Paid off. The boys all get a chance to shine here, with Hiei showing off the power of the Dragon of the Darkness Flame, Yusuke unlocking his true potential, even Kuwabara gets his own macho speech. A mulberry is a tree, Kuwabara is a man, and I'll prove it! Number 7. Pain's Assault, Naruto Shippuden. <laughs> Fueled by vengeance, motivated by the desire to erase suffering, the knuckle-headed ninja and the leader of the Akatsuki were similar in more ways than they would ever like to admit. After decimating the Hidden Leaf Village, Pain and his six paths take on Naruto in a battle to decide the fate of the ninja world. <laughs> Not only is the fight as explosive as you would have expected, but it managed to make great use of the emotional tension left over from Jiraiya's death. Symbolic and action-packed, this was a clear example of the series at its best. Number 6. Return to Shiganshina Arc Attack on Titan 
Up until this point, Eren's war against the giant creatures that destroyed his life had been nothing but a bloodbath layered with an ever-growing mystery as to the true state of the world surrounding them and his place in it. But this, this was the arc that not only gave us some of the most gratifying action and devastating character deaths in recent memory, but also flipped everyone's perceptions on their heads as they finally learned the truth beyond their shores. <laughs> Bringing down the Colossal Titan, Levi vs. the Beast Titan, the introduction of Marley, the explosion of lore, it cannot be understated how intrinsic yet monumental this narrative thread truly was. <laughs> Number 5. The Golden Age Arc Berserk How can you say that? They've been in there for two hours! Those are my men in there, Gaston! Now move it! Prepare for dark fantasy at its peak, with this flashback to Guts' time with the Band of the Hawk chronicling their rise to glory, their fleeting moments of happiness, as well as their crushing end. Guts' bout against a hundred soldiers, as well as the near-death encounter with Zod, are still exquisite. What the hell is that? You evaded my attack successfully. Well done. But the real brilliance of this arc lies in the overlapping relations between our main trio. Just as you're riding the high of seeing Guts and Casca find true love together, you've got the events of the Eclipse and Griffith's ungodly betrayal. Prepare to suffer and love every minute of it. Only you and you alone obscured the vision of my dream. I submit. Number 4. Chimera Ant Arc Hunter Hunter While you could easily say that everything that happened with the Phantom Troop was more eventful, what made this arc so gratifying was its meditation on character. Not just gone, but regarding the series' ultimate villain, Meruim. As dark reflections of one another, this arc chronicled how the young hunter and the king of the ants came face to face with the cruelty of the world, as well as where they stand as individuals. The short answer being, as immeasurable engines of destruction. The fact the series contains the awesomeness that is Meruem vs. Netero and Gon vs. Pitto more than makes up for it. Number 3. Soul Society Arc Bleach. You have to give it to Bleach, it certainly went out of his way with his first major arc and presented us with the perfect introduction to the militarized life that was Soul Society. As he desperately tries to save his friend Rukia from execution, Ichigo finds himself branding his blade against the combined might of the Gote 13. From Ichigo's fights with Kenpachi and Byakuya, all the way to the surprising reveal at the end, the fact that there are too many awesome moments in this arc to count solidifies the Soul Society as one of anime's best arcs. Number 2. Wano Arc – One Piece just when you thought things couldn't get any bigger or better than Marineford, along comes the Straw Hats war against the likes of Kaido in order to free the country of Wano from his bloody grip. Everything got an unbelievable jump in quality here, animation and fight sequences included. <laughs> You'd think between Zoro and Sanji's epic battles against King and Queen, the seemingly never-ending climactic showdown between Luffy and Kaido, as well as the introduction of the brilliant Yamato would be enough. But no, this arc also gave us Odin. You're spoiling us here, Oda.
Before we reveal our number one pick, here's a few honorable mentions. Magnostat, Magi Series. <laughs> Winter Cup, Kuroko's Basketball. <laughs> Farmark, Vinland Saga. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Freezer Arc – Dragon Ball Z the events on Planet Namek are what made the series the juggernaut that it is, primarily due to the actions of a certain tyrannical alien overlord. You must be Frieza, the one responsible for the horrible chain of events that have taken place on this planet. Where do we start? The Namekian Massacre, the battle against the Ginyu Force, Vegeta's lament, Goku's turning into a Super Saiyan, some of the greatest moments in Dragon Ball are full on display here. Of course, we can't dismiss the sheer magnetism of Frieza's villainous charm. Who can forget about his marathon-long battle with Goku on a dying planet, or his supposed demise at his own hand? No matter the highs and lows that came after, to many this will always stand as the pinnacle. You can destroy planets, but you can never destroy what I am, friend. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.